All right, so I'm doing that, and now I'm just going to let it. This is where you allow the spirit to ascend on this thing. <laughs> and you walk away. And then you don't go back there, and you don't go in there and mess around. You don't touch it, you leave it alone. And then the next morning, you go in there, and you see, and I think in our room it's going to dry because it's hot in our room. All right, this is what I did here. What I just did here, I did this at home. And then I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to see what kind of paper I got. Oh, that's the back of it. But if you can't stand it, and it's not quite dry, you can lift up here and kind of see something. <laughs> but don't disturb the surface. I think I did put a little gold. I'm going to put some of that bronze in there. Or this bronze, bronze. Is that bronze? Well, the bronze, it's funny. It, this is bronze, and it looks like it's aqua because it separates like that. But it is bronze. Believe me, it's bronze. It sure looks like aqua, but it, see, you're seeing a little bronze in there. It, it, is, it is bronze. I, I know it is, you know, it just is, I know it is, it is, it is. So I throw some of that on there, and then you go like this, and you finish, and then you have this beautiful paper that you want, might want to put on a painting and have a, let that tell you what to do. Let, let that piece tell you what to do. Now if you can, yeah, well I'm going to pass a different one. This. You've got your imagination. You know what I just did in front of you? I poured paint on you, just like this. Right. And now this is the three colors that I use today. Mm -hmm. That I, uh, I use, actually, I use the um, turquoise here, I use gold, uh, azo gold, and I use the crimson. See right here? And then I just poured it on. And now it, I let it dry overnight. And then I see, just like I just did that one. And then I just lift it up. And someone asked me if it peels off, and yes, it does. And so this is what you get. And uh, um, putting these in paintings, they're like a great big diamond yes. in your face. So you have to settle them down by painting over the top of them and making them fit into your painting, making it incorporate. But they do tell you what to do. They give you a lot of action, a lot of beautiful things. You can't do this. I mean, you can do this. The paint, the paint does it. You know, this one was really, really wet, and it got really, really more subtle than this one. So it was the same colors. So, interesting. So that's that. Can I back up a minute? The beginning, you put on the tissue paper, you paint gesso on it, and you'll let that dry. Yeah. Then you flip it over, you put gesso on it, then you put paint in the wet gesso. Yes. Okay. Key. Got it. Key. It won't work if the wet gesso is dry. Right. It'll just sit on top. Right. Yeah. But you have to, you, I had talked about using this is called a pull-off right there. I just call it a pull-off. And so I just go on in here and, and let it dance on this paper. And so in that case, I have a, a uh, Reba-shaped, interesting piece of paper that I can put in a collage later. And then I'm just going to save that. Oh, OK. And I can put it in a painting. And when I put it in a painting, and I put a medium. Where are you going to put that? Oh, when I put a medium on top of it, it goes away. I told, pointed out one black one that I had in a painting up there. That's over there. I oh. use this. This is good stuff. That's a good Very idea. good stuff. But it sticks together. That's a good idea. All right. Now, one, yeah. what this one turned out like? Okay. Add those colors. And then you can do some fun dancing 
and decorating with a stamp, with a ring, with gesso, with different things, and just decorate your own paper and have it the way you want it. I don't think I'm going to go through doing all that, but this is a suggestion. You take a picture. Nothing is ever finished, really, until you frame it and sell it. Because <laughs> you can go right back into that thing anytime you want it. And hanging them up, a good way to know if it's finished is put it up in your house and then put a frame around it and then for sure yeah. and you don't touch it, it's okay. Got one in the living room. Because it's really disturbing when you have it all framed and ready and you put it in your house and you say, oh my gosh, i got to change that. You know? And so that's... Okay, you can also use deli paper to make tissue paper, to make the collage paper. You can also use rice paper. Well, that's not rice paper, but anyway, just white rice paper that has flakes and good little goodies in it. Oh yeah. I have some. You know, I'm not going to do it today, but you can use rice papers like this that are beautiful. I was ready to do it. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow with you guys. But those rice papers in your paintings give a different texture than tissue. So your other good stuff happens when you use rice paper. But you don't have to, you can just use regular paper. So I, since I said, I don't really like how that looks right there. I might as well do something. Do I have a, this color? And since you are such a fabulous art uh, guru, and you are so sweet to me, and kind, and came to see what I kind of know, I'm going to risk in front of you. Because I could say this is done, but I just said I don't think it is done. So I'll look into here, and I'll say, oh, gee, that's a nice color there. Well, I think I'll just do this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Wow. That's a little bit better. Makes a huge difference. Yeah, definitely is. And then I'm going to kind of have a dry brush and, and just kind of make it blend a little bit better. So it's sort of fading up into there. So that looks a little more, a little, a little better. I can go, I can go down into here and say, I think I'll bring that a little down in here, if I want to. And then I'll say, well, I liked it before I put the water on there, actually. So I'll say, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but it's not very much there, you know. And when Frank says it's nice, boy, does that turn my crank. <laughs> Come on, Frank. <coughs> I'm loving hearing what you have to say there. Thank you. We get our easy mark, you know? Yeah, easy mark. That is sweet. Yeah. Enthusiasm. No one complaining. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to go in here and monkey with this. And get this. So that incorporates a little bit better. Oh, yeah. So I have a, a yellow thing and I have that yellow thing. Yeah, it looks really good. So, yeah. so when I stamp in here, I might want to bring that same color down in here. I see I have it underneath there. So. I might add that a little more. Just a little subtle. If I want to save that, I need to glue gun it. <coughs> Air gun. I gotta save those balls. They got a little bit too wide. I, I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> you want us to go home happy, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all risking and doing things and saying, well, if this doesn't work, I'll try this. 
I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Because I can figure out how to get it back. My name's still on that. I was going to put a black strip on that. This is an embossing gun. I like the embossing gun. It has very intense heat. It's narrow. I can direct how much I paint. I mean, how, what I'm going to do with the paint. I go down and up so I don't burn it. Down. But I really want not a perfect stamp. And I really want it to just dance on this paper and do different things. It does you know, it just has to say organic, okay? That's all it has to say. And it sort of ties the top together better, I think, with that opaque color. I can't see it right now from a distance. If I was painting at home, I'd use my camera and I'd just take a picture of it right now. And I look at my picture, and it's then I've actually got far away. So my camera is my friend. My digital camera is my friend when I'm painting. Keep it in your pocket and take a picture. It works out very nicely. You don't have to get up and run around if you don't want to. I need a roller. Although it's good for you, I guess. I don't like it too much. So I like a little push back, you know, not so much. And it doesn't mean that I, I'm going to leave that exactly that color, because I'm not sure. Did that improve it to push it back a little bit by not having it? It did. You know, it's still you're just looking at that. Right. Yeah, you're just looking at that. It's going to have to be covered with another color. But it's going to put the the tissue in between the crystal line. So it's just, if you just try this, try that, see how you like it, do different things with it, have fun. And so I'm going to need the uh, soft gel medium. I'm using soft gel medium a lot uh, for uh, collage because this has a, rather than Palmer, I can use Palmer if I want to. I am thinking kind of, you know, landscape when I'm ripping this thing. So, try a little couple pieces on there. Yeah, that's it. Because it's all set to go, soft gel medium. Um, Palmer medium is the same as soft gel medium, is the same as heavy gel medium. Each one, they're the same product, only more water, more water, more water. So if you had one jar of heavy gel medium, you could make those other ones out of it. So I'm going to put it up in an uneven area. If I want, I might, since I'm always talking about maybe the next time, I'm going to put a strip of this tomorrow on my piece. I'm going to cut one that's like just a straight strip, just for fun. In, put it in a different place. I haven't done that. <laughs> this particular demo, this in a magazine, I told you that, didn't I? Yeah. Amazing. You think I could do it in my sleep? But it all just takes time, you know, to do this stuff. Playing with that paper. I don't like to have um, straight lines on it. Uh, this particular, <coughs> putting this in here. I like that weirdness. Organic ish. Okay, and then I'll just glue that on. And then I'm going to use, I usually use this kind of. Um, just cheap paper towels when I'm doing collage. 
And usually I have it in a clean, clean place, not on a messed up area. And this is the best board in the whole wide world, I think. It's a Strathmore illustration, illustration board. 500 series hot press. You can open this up and get several layers and peel it back and cut into it and peel back and have really neat, interesting, organic shapes on with this paper. You turn it over and it's the same thing. You have two sides that work beautiful comparing to having crescent illustration board. You have to pay a price for it. It's a little, it's more expensive, but it's twice the bang for the buck. It's the best illustration board that I know of, anyway. And I love working on it. Now, which piece did I have on this job? Piece I had where? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it on. And it will appear. I'm going to leave my sky up there. And you can do this at home and make a painting for yourself. Just with this. You can just go nuts with this. You can do so, all kinds of different things with this. You can put it on the back of it and it sticks faster. And you can put it on the board. There's no one way really, just whatever fits. So I'm just playing with this. Trying to make uh, a mountainscape that looks interesting. I might leave that in there. I might put some tissue in that area. <clears throat> Maybe I'll leave that. With risk comes reward, something like that. And I'll just leave that white area because I can paint a, a solid color in there and that's fine and dandy for me. Because I know what I probably know what I'm going to do with it. And then I just go over the top of this to fuse the piece to that surface. You're fusing it. If I use the Viva, it sticks. This works better because it's just cheap, cheap. I've been complaining about everybody's cheap paper towels this week. Now you know a reason to use those cheap ones. Now go get the Queen, the queen Viva. Viva has no imprints. And if you want imprints on your paper that looks like bounce or whatever it is, then buy that. If you want, you want to be in direction. 